So our second batch of Johnson & Johnson vaccines is being rolled out. Millions more doses are due to come to South Africa in the coming months, not just from Johnson & Johnson, but from Pfizer as well. Of course, we heard earlier about the BioVac Institute tasked with the logistics of storing and transporting our vaccines. But what of the AstraZeneca vaccines? Of course, we've got a million doses that we've put on hold following results showing a poor response in relation to the COVID-19 uh, dominant variant here in South Africa. Africa. I'm joined now by Professor Musa Moshabela, Acting Deputy Vice-Chancellor for Research and Innovation at the University of KwaZulu-Natal. Professor, good evening. Always great to chat to you. So the AstraZeneca vaccine didn't do too well against the dominant variant here in South Africa. Um, but do you think it's best we ship it out to other countries, which seems to be the plan at this point? Uh, good evening, Sally. Um, thank you for, for having me. I, I, I am of the view that uh, given the slow pace of the rollout in South Africa, um, we should be opening up our options in terms of vaccines and not necessarily uh, discard any options in front of us. If you ask globally now, everybody is saying that, listen, get the first vaccine you can get. It makes a difference. And this is the attitude that we should be having in South Africa. I don't necessarily, I'm not saying that we shouldn't support the rest of the African continent. That's a different issue. Mm. And we are doing that through AVAT. But I think for South Africa, we do need to make sure that we open up our, our options. If we eliminate uh, Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine completely, then we are left with Johnson & Johnson. Then maybe we will have Pfizer. But then what else? And so, and, and the same Pfizer, vaccine is also now looking for a booster, which means that you may end up with a, th a third dose, similar to the way that we could have gone if we went with the uh, Oxford AstraZeneca, if we went for the booster as well. These things, we figure them out as we go. We really need to make sure that we open up our options. The issue is, what do we use vaccine for? Who do we use which vaccine for and when? This is the question that we should be grappling with and not necessarily deny the populations the options mm. uh, that are available currently globally. So what we know so far, and please you will update me if I'm out of date on this, but my understanding is that in a clinical trial, the AstraZeneca jab has proven to be only 22% effective in preventing mild to moderate cases. We don't know how it would do against severe cases, and this is with our variant, and I say our variant reservedly, the variant we yes. discovered. Um, yes. So, you know, a layperson will go, well, that doesn't sound very effective at all. Isn't it just yes. a waste of time and resources? You're saying no? I'm saying no, because remember that the clinical trial we're referring to, it's a phase two trial, it's a small trial. So it's not a big trial. And the second thing is that, uh, our priority is to make sure that we protect people from severe disease and hospitalization and death. Yes, eventually we want to protect people from mild disease because we've got a problem of, a growing problem of long COVID, which at some point we'll probably have to talk about. But right now we want to prevent hospitalizations and death. And so we cannot say because we don't have the evidence that it does not protect against the hospital, hospitalization and severe disease, then conclude that it does not. Right now, the message that the population is getting is that it does not. And we've seen this happen in Germany, mm. where they also had a negative attitude towards it. Right now, people don't want to take uh, Oxford-AstraZeneca vaccine in Germany. UK is rolling it out and they're using it, including uh, in older people, and they're showing that it's actually making a difference against severe disease and hospitalization. We yeah. shouldn't mislead our people and the next thing, have to have the hard work of convincing people later on to take Ox mm. uh, uh, Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine when we told them that it's not good. I hear you. Um, we're also hearing more details about the vaccine rollout plans. We know that Pfizer vaccines are coming in as well. Uh, we're going to get more Johnson & Johnson vaccines. And we've also heard from the BioVac Institute uh, in charge of all the storage and transportation of these vaccines. Uh, so, you know, government working very strongly with BioVac. Uh, there have been some concerns expressed that the logistical challenge is one that we're simply not up to. Um, I'm wondering what your view is. When we move Move into phase two when we're going to be vaccinating so many more people. Do you think we can get it right? 
<laughs> well, we can, depending on what we do. We have a bad track record of making wrong decisions. Um, and a lot of it, a lot of these decisions are because we are being over cautious. And I understand because of all this uh, history of corruption and mistrust that we have in the country, it's not conducive to taking risks and opening up the space for a lot of other people to participate and companies and organizations and institutions to participate in the process of rolling out the vaccine. But because we are risk averse, then we limit ourselves to very limited options that we want to argue that or demonstrate that they are of high standards. And South Africans, we, we like very high standards. But what we are losing in the process is the options. The rollout of the vaccines require everybody to participate, all hands on deck. We need to be entertaining offers from other people who are willing to volunteer, other companies that can. We can't restrict it to one company that's going to then bring it out in drips and drabs. This is something that is too important to actually um, be too uh, risk averse and over cautious about, but responsible. That is important. I don't dispute that. But we need a lot more hands on deck. Good point. And thank you so much for your time this evening, Professor Mosa Moshabela, Acting Deputy Vice Chancellor for Research and Innovation at the University of KwaZulu-Natal.